The Nigerian Senate advises the federal government to create all inclusive reforms in the Nigerian police force. And the Minister of Transportation, the road senior major, says China has refused to give Nigeria money for major projects. This is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadogo. Now, the Senate has advised the federal government to evolve and implement holistic reforms in the Nigerian police force. It believes employing more able-bodied personnel, injecting more resources for procuring arms, ammunition and other policing gadgets, and regular training will ensure efficient policing in the country. Now, these formed part of the recommendations contained in the report of the Joint Committee on National Security and Intelligence, Defense, Police Affairs, Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, and the mayhem visited on the city of Calabar during the NSAS protests in October 2020. In his presentation, Chairman of the Joint Committee, Senator Ibrahim Gobi, said that investigative hearings by the lawmakers revealed that the violence during the protest was largely spontaneous, with no identified goals, leaders, sponsors, or financiers. Now, joining us to discuss is Lawrence Alobi, former Commissioner of Police in the FCT, and of course, Emmanuel Ongobiko, National Coordinator of the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. Hurua and Jonathan Abang are journalists. Good evening to you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Good evening. All right, good I'll evening. start. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. I'll start with the police commissioner. Uh, Lawrence, uh, let's start with you now. Uh, all of this just came up uh, in the wake of uh, the NSAS protest in 2020 with Nigerians coming out in agitation, uh, you know, protesting police brutality, extortion, among other injustice, you know, that were meted out against Nigerians. But over time, you will agree with me that there have been talks about reforming the Nigeria police force. You know, but over time, these reforms have seemingly not brought the desired you know, changes that we want to see in the Nigeria police force. So just exactly how do we begin to create, uh, bring about these changes? What do we need to do differently? Very much see that the Senate has come to realize its obligations in line with Section 24 you know, the Constitution, Section 14 of the Constitution, which provides that security and security and welfare of the citizens is the prime purpose of government. Government either at, at a legislative level, executive level, or legislative uh, judicial level. So every government should be concerned about the security and the citizens. I'm happy that the Senate has now written to this to uh, realize the importance of this, of that the police has a key, the, 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 the key, uh, the key uh, element, so the key, the key agency, I mean, that is charged with internal security. People agents in charge of internal security need to be, need to ought to be well equipped, well funded. And again, today now, the police is going through terrible stress. The manpower requirement is grossly inadequate. Poor training, because of lack of funds, poor accommodation for the, both office and, office and residential accommodations, poor equipment. Not, not, most DPOs don't have patrol vehicles in their divisions. And when there's a distress call, for instance, what, what, what would the DPO do? And sometimes a whole DPO, the whole division, there's only one vehicle. And they could be maybe distance called three distance call at a particular time or period. How would the DPO respond? So there, there's lots to there's lot to be done. Not just talk about reform. Reform is not just cosmetic reform. Reform in terms of equipment, procurement. Today, security is technologically driven and knowledge-based. How has it been applied in the police? I see, even I see the budget that was given recently. That police budget is, it's not to talk them about based, at, if, if you look at their, their needs, which is concerned with the needs of the police that will make the police to be effectively, to be effectively efficient, operationally effective, 
and even in terms of the the, 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 the human the human the moral character the human conduct of the police the police today most policemen today are aggressive because of the society itself so antagonistic to the police you see life is based on principle of reciprocity love beget love the, the answers actually has met has so made the police to be so do so so do dehumanized Police stations were attacked, police men were killed, police stations were burned, police vehicles were burned, and these are not the cause of this insurgency. I know there are some policemen who have who have actions are not in line with the, the rules of engagement and personal conduct. But the government itself has not lived up to expectation in terms of ensuring the police adequate manpower. The police visibility is one of the ways to prevent crime. Police visibility. Who are they today? The police, the police, and giant police is less than five hundred thousand. And we have one, one. We have two hundred and twenty million Nigerians. Look at the topography. And again, other factors that even as, as I made criminality, poverty, bad governance, unemployment, poor, poor educational standard, other social factors that promote crime, which were not caused by the police, but the police are now at the receiving end. So the government should be should have the political will, so that the police is well funded. They, they should do mass recruitment. In fact, the police need at least ten million every year for the next five years. Ten million every year for the next five years, at least that will be able to build the strength of the police and then equipment like drones, CCTVs, modern equipment and technology should be, should be applied in the police. For instance, do you know that? Sometimes when the crime is being committed, that the police need to track a criminal, the police go and look for a private track, tracker. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. The police system, they cannot track. They don't have their own effective and efficient functional tracking mechanism. They go to hire private, All right. private, private trackers. All right. So, uh, thank you. Um, uh, 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 holistic in terms of training right. capacity, baby. All right, um, Lawrence. Uh, and so forth. Yes. All right, all right um, thank you, Lawrence, for your opening salvo. We'll still talk more about these um, changes that you have talked about, but let's uh, get other members of the panel to you know, also share their own views uh, concerning this important uh, discussion. Uh, let me get to uh, Emmanuel on Wubiko, uh, Human Rights uh, Writers Association of Nigeria. You know, indeed, uh, you have uh, captured most of um, all the injustices you know that have been meted out to Nigerians uh, by the members or officers of the Nigerian police force including you know extortion one that comes to mind is what happened uh, not so long ago you know where policemen were asking uh, the demand you know, extorting one millionaire from you know just uh, citizens but if we were to talk about these reforms that the, the police commissioner who just spoke with us talked about uh, training talked about um, equipping them with uh, you know, equipment and all they need to make their jobs uh, better. What do we do about renewing their mindset and, of course, uh, you know, the way they see or relate to um, Nigerians or civilians? How can we begin to create the desired reform in that particular, you know, direction? Emmanuel. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to say, first and foremost, that the NSAS uh, protest that took place uh, around October of last year, was uh, one of the best things to have happened to this country. The best thing. Um, yeah, one of the best, in fact, the finest, finest, uh, it's a phenomenon, it's an event that the police ought to have seized upon to begin some kind of internal cleansing mechanisms. But unfortunately, because of the fact that a lot of reactionary elements are embedded in the federal government, uh, a lot of talks, armed talks, we are smuggled in, we are brought in that infiltrated, that very wonderful protest that even happened for up to four days without any violent incident before uh, import, imported foreign, uh, foreign talks. When I say foreign, I don't mean no Nigerians. I mean people who were brought in from different parts of the country. A lot of them were brought in from Kano into Abuja. And uh, Nigerians, some of us who were at the protest, we saw the way some uh, SUVs, brand new SUVs, were actually driving these armed talks to the centers of this protest to interrupt the protest and to begin to kill, attack, you know, protesters. So the event itself is a very, in fact, it's the first time in the history of this country that you have a largest 
a uh, uh, number of youth come out to say we are denouncing the modus operandi of the Nigerian police force that have been in place for ages. Issue of police brutality, issues of extrajudicial killings, the issues of extortion. If you go to the southeast, um, uh, prior to that NSAS protest, the entire southeast became like an uh, occupying, I see the police is an occupying force where they mount roadblocks on the major highways and they, are, they were extorting, uh, you know, uh, vehicles, extorting, you know, passengers, escorting everybody, escorting everybody to see. And unfortunately, that event that happened, uh, it seems no lessons have been learned because so many of those manifestations of illegalities by the police are still going on. Because even here in Abuja, where we live, not too long ago, a young man who even posted on social media that he was robbed by some police men who stopped his uh, Uber, Uber that he was using in the night, and they took him to an ATM and they emptied his, uh, his entire account. And this kind of incident is not very, is not very uncommon. It's something that happens actually every time. But it was, it was a very notorious attitude of the SARS that were said to have been disbanded. But we're not too sure if SARS has actually been disbanded because they immediately they disbanded SARS they now replace us with a different, a different, a different SARS. So it was just like a baptismal change of name. So what I'm saying is this: the event has come and gone. Nigerians need to learn a lot of positive lessons. We need to begin to uh, have some kind of a constructive partnership between the civil society and the police in its practical applications. We need to clean up the police. The policing mechanisms in Nigeria is far very much outdated. The police, uh, they seem to be operating in the kind of in the kind of mindset that they had when they were set up by the colonialists, when they were set up to service the colonial masters and not to serve the interests of the collective, the interests of the Nigerian citizens. So, if we begin, if you want to talk about police reforms, what is the structure of the police that we have? The Policing structure that we have right now, the policing institution that we have in Nigeria, is completely, um, can I use that word, outdated? We need to reform the police by creating the legal frameworks to allow states to have their state police, to have their local police, to have a kind of policing structure that civilized societies like uh, the, the, the U.S., like uh, Britain, are operating where you have metropolitan police, you can see right. the efficiency of the police in the UK. You can see the efficiency of the police in Los Angeles or in New York police, uh, 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 New York police, and the rest of the uh, less. Of, uh, I, mean, I mean, the rest of the state police institutions they have. So we need to have to reform the police. Then, secondly, there has to be transparency and accountability within the policing hierarchy. The policing hierarchy is opaque. The way they operate the. Uh, I mean, that, that fin uh, finances is very opaque. Nobody knows exactly how many policemen we have in a state like Lagos. How many policemen do we have? What is the total count of the police? Every other year, every president comes in and says, I'm going to recruit 10,000 police every other time. They're recruiting 10,000 police, 10,000 police, 10,000 police. And in most of those cases, the, 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 the formality they adopt in recruiting those, uh, uh, getting those police recruits, uh, they are not very not uh, uh, compliant to 21st century uh, global best practices. Because even the Police Service Commission, weak as it is, inefficient as it is, ineffective as it is, even raised an alarm yesterday that they have noticed that armed robbers have been recruited into the police as I speak. This is exactly what the former president of this country, Chibolishu Kobasanjo, uh, All right, mentioned, mentioned, and it wasn't taken serious. A lot of armed robbers are in the police wearing the uniform before the police. Even the police commissioners don't know how many police they have. All right, mother. The police cannot tell Nigerians how many police we have. All right, mother. How thanks. Many police do we have in Nigeria? All right, Amanda, thanks for those uh, those points that you've made, and I'm sure I will still get um, the, the former uh, police commissioner to you know address some of them that you have raised. But I still want uh, the journalist uh, 
Jonathan to join in this particular discourse. Uh, you know, Imanda seems to believe that uh, the NSAS protest uh, was one of the best things that happened to us as a country. Mm -hmm. You know, Nigeria just came out, you know, on mass to vent out. Uh, Imanda, um, Jonathan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Please. All right, fine. So I was just trying to just uh, lay my line of thought here, what Emmanuel said, but the answers. But over over time, it's been this like the second year since uh, the 2020, you know, protest by Nigerians across um, the country. But would you really say that uh, the police is changing, you know, in direction, in the way they are, you know, relating with uh, average Nigerians. Uh, because uh, from what we hear, from what we uh, read and from reports we have been saying, it's as though all of the things that Nigerians are asking for are not really being met. What are your thoughts, really? Well, from experience and uh, from what I have reported and from what I get that here from the depression remains the same. But while some feel there has been some change, uh, uh, to the greater extent, the truth is, uh, uh, well, I doubt it has been really uh, any change. And the reason for that is very simple. Uh, we have the police, which is basically a militia for the elite. And like uh, Emmanuel of me had said, uh, that look, the police is uh, basically the uh, modus operandi is such that uh, suggests, okay, look, uh, they are, we, are, we are still loyal to uh, you know, public officers are not necessarily the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or the taxpayer. Now, of course, uh, Lawrence had to be retired in that CP State studio, and I want to say that uh, truth be told, the police is actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, I'll, I'll try and reconnect with you. We're having a difficulty uh, trying to uh, really uh, get your, your audio clearly, uh, but we'll try and okay. see if we can uh, get that better. But let's just bring um, Lawrence back into the discourse. Uh, uh, Commissioner, let's talk about some of the concerns that uh, uh, one of the panelists have mentioned. He talked about uh, you know transparency in operation. He also talked about the structure of the Nigeria police, he believes that it is outdated. Don't you think uh, we, that is one angle that uh, needs to be looked into in, you know, with all the stock of um, uh, reforms? Uh, and again, uh, I also want you to address uh, these issues that, uh, that we have. So, uh, do we still have um, SARS or is just uh, a SWAT, another nomenclature that have just uh, replaced uh, the operations of um, the SARS? Because uh, from reports we are getting, it is as though nothing has actually changed. And I'm sure you are aware of what happened in Edo State, Benin, to be precise, where the Niger police abused their obligation and extorted over one million naira from uh, a student there. I just want you to just react to some of these um, points that I have made just mentioned. Yeah, thank you very much. To a large extent, there are some points which I agree with him, particularly where they said the police, the police of Parandi has not, has, uh, is, is, is colonial in nature. Okay. You know, we have, we have, we have, we have, in, the, in policing expert, we have, they have been established that type, different types of policing. And it, the style of policing is predicated or determined by the type of government in the country. That's why we have the colonial administration, was colonial policing, which was based purely to protect the interests of the colonial interests, not the interests of the citizens. And that was why there was a brutality, there was repressive policing, abuse of human rights, and what have you. Not too long, Nigeria got independent, we, 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 the military came on board. And military also ruled, also ruled by the true democratic process, it's the true battle of the gun. And the military the ruled by decrees, I mean, immediate effects and so forth. People, they, they, and the military is based on Force application of force. The military based application of force. People are being compelled. People are not willing made to understand that you have to be willing to do something, you know, participate in governance. So actually, so but you know, when a democratic dispensation, what the police need is that the police need what I call democratic policing. policing democratic policing. Democratic policing, policing conforming to democratic democratic norms okay. and policing to meet the needs of the people. And those democratic norms are human right protection, uh, rights of the citizens, policing the media needs of the citizens, and also being uh, they have accountability and transparency in their operations, and uh, being, being 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 humane. We're not the police are not policing animals or or or, or, the, or the, the the forest. Policing human media, that, that human content, human content, the fear of God, human content. 
But the Commissioner, that, would, you, would you really say that uh, during the training for recruitment for police, uh, new recruits that these are, uh, do they undergo through all of these uh, issues or this point that you have made uh, uh, to show consent for human rights? Are they really aware of what the law says concerning all of this? And um, uh, people over time have talked about uh, you know, psychological training for the police. Uh, do they have to go through all of this uh, when they are at the recruitment stage? Like I told you, I said the type of government in the country determines the type of policing. When the police came through, the people was established, like I said, on, during a, by the colonial masters. Not too long ago, independent, the military came on board. Military also, the same attitude for this regime protection. By the way, they, the police were there established to protect the interests of the colonial administration. So when they also the, were called independent, the political leaders also adopted the same system. That, 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 Mentality of that the police to protect the interest of the of government, mm. the government, and that was what alienated alienated the police from the people, and the people saw the police as agent of government against the people. That was that the mentality of this public antagonism against the, the police, because the police when it was established, so right now we have a democratic dispensation. The police need to be reorientated, need to be retrained, and applying democratic principles, emotional intelligence. These are things they need to apply. They don't, that has not been done, I have to say that only without the convocation. So I think that's what we talk about reform. Everything is, all, everything is born on attitude, not question of structure, whether it's the state police or federal police. It's attitude, everything, attitude is key. That orientation, let them know that they are there to serve the people. When I was CPF city, you see, it's all depend on the, the officer's orientation, leadership, be talent, followership. When I was CPF city, I tell my officer in the FC police commander, the way you want your brother to start to be police and police in your village or your town. That's how we police people in everybody in everybody in FCT where there's commission of police. If you don't want you're able to be brutalized, you don't want to be extorted, you don't do it in Abuja. And I enforce that. You see? So because me, I believe I believe I believe in democratic policing. Policing right. in each interest of the people. Understand? So it is when all this is done. But again, the police because frustration is one of the things they are some of them behave the way they are behaving. They are being frustrated. They are poor salaries. They, they, I don't understand different why a policeman should earn less than a military officer. A, military, a police officer should earn less than a military officer. And a policeman is, is fighting war every day of his life. So are you saying that uh, the crime. poor remuneration is actually one of the reasons why the police would actually you know, start doing things all right and uh, not course. really care about um, the average man on the street? Breaks. Frustration, frustration breeds some negative attitude. Frustration. Right? Even a wife in your house, the wife is frustrated, the wife begins to show negative attitude. Even the man is motivated, mass law. Mass law in terms of motivation. Okay, so you're advocating that they, there should be better funding for the Nigeria police. Uh, although better we have heard we have heard that, that they're looking into that this year. All right, I'll, I'll still Let come back to you uh, to get your closing thought and all of that, but I still want to bring up other members of the panel. Uh, I don't know if you still have um, Jonathan uh, online. I will continue with Emmanuel then. Emmanuel or will be called you uh, the the uh, FCT, the former FCT uh, CP has uh, tried to, you know, clarify some of um, uh, the points that you had made so far concerning the issues uh, you know the average uh, Nigerian policeman uh, you know go uh, through. But let's talk more. Now I still want to hammer on this um, part of uh, psychological training. Do you really think that in any way would uh, go a long way in uh, reducing all of this uh, inhuman uh, attitude of the policeman to civilians, would that change anything? Or what more do you really think should be done? Yeah. yeah, first and foremost, as someone who has lived in Abuja for over 20 years, I want to say that CP Alobi, what he said is, if he, has, he even did much more than what he has said mm. in terms of exemplar, exemplary leadership. He was a very good Police commissioner. So why, why are all that commands you know, not borrowing the leave from um, the FCT then? No, let, no let, me, let me land. You know, the problem with the policing system we have in this country is that the moment somebody starts doing well in a particular uh, in a particular department, they don't keep that person for more than two years, three years. They just pull out the person and take him to somewhere very inconsequential. You know, now let us... Is that deliberate? There are very good policemen. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the police is totally bad. There are a lot of good well-educated police officers in this country. What I'm saying is this. What is happening to some of those very excellent police officers 
good professionals that have left the policing uh, you know, service? Why are they not being made consultants and people maybe include them as part of the training, training, uh, uh, you know, uh, training, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, formation so that people that are coming into police, being enlisted into police right now, we learn a lot from how they actually serve the country. But that system is not there. The moment somebody retires as a police, even most of those IGs, for instance, Obono Novo did excellently as, as an IG of police. Some of those wonderful pol uh, police IGs that have left, you don't get to see them visiting the police headquarters. What is happening? When you see, when a retired general in the army leaves, you always see them have partnerships. They have a lot of programs. When they have programs for training, they invite them to train uh, those younger soldiers. So what I'm saying is this. We, Nigeria already has one of the best police acts. Police act, Nigerian Police Act of 2020 that was signed by the president of this country. Take a look at it. If, if you read it, it's quite very simple to understand. One of the best. A lot of, uh, a lot of provisions in that act have... I have elaborated so much about the need for the police officer to respect the fundamental human rights of Nigerians. But the problem we have... But they're really aware of all of these rights. Fiction. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these police officers, I mean, especially the recruits that didn't go beyond secondary school, most of the officers they have in the police are graduates, diploma holders. They are well, uh, most of them are well-educated. They may be aware of this. Uh, police uh, act that has just been signed into law uh, for I think about three months or two months by the president. So the IG of police, the commissioners of police, there, sh there has to be a mass production. Now we have, even have a Ministry of Police Affairs. Ministry of Police Affairs should do mass production of the copies of the police act and make it compulsory. Set up a test. Before you recruit any police officer, he must pass the test of understanding what is included in that Police Act of 2020. 20. But right now, the police is even having credibility uh, deficit. They're even having problem of finding robust and well-educated young men to join the police. Everybody's aware that even right now, they're even saying certain uh, sections of the country are not actually coming forward to be recruited into the police force. That's why we need to restructure the system. Uh, all right, we need to restructure Mano. We need to structure the policing uh, institution in Nigeria. All so right, thank you, Manuel. Nigerians will have a sense of belonging. Yes. All right, Jonathan, let's try and get your, your own opinion in Edgewise. We couldn't really uh, uh, understand what you were saying because of uh, some um, disconnect there. But I just want to get um, your general thoughts concerning uh, this um, holistic uh, reform of the Nigeria police. In what direction should we be headed? Jonathan. Okay, I think we lost uh, Jonathan there. I'll... All right, uh, sorry about that. Uh, but let's just get some final words now from the former police uh, CP, uh, Lawrence Alobi. Let's try and sum all of this up, uh, going by all the points that have been raised uh, by you and, of course, uh, by Emmanuel. You know. So what should we be doing in the immediacy? What should our focus, our thrust be right now in the short term? Yeah, thank you very much, Ed. The reform should be holistic and empirical. And again, like he made a point, the point is that the police have not been able to, 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 to explore the resources they have of, of retired officers. We are very fine, knowledgeable, and professional police officers who are retired. But the leadership of the force has not been able to, to, to leverage on that. And like, like the, the chief of defense staff is doing, chief of defense staff is going through, is going, visiting all the, the geopolitical zones in the country, interacting, interacting, has created a space where interacting with retired officers, military officers, Asking the chair to come and see they can contribute to add value and bring about bring about a transformation that will enhance the performance of the, the military. This is what the police also do. The police, the IG should at least get some knowledgeable, knowledgeable and experienced police officers as think tank, as consultant. Because the young ones, the young ones have who are just they, have, they, they carry the ranks, but they don't have the, the knowledge, of, they don't have the knowledge and experience. So I think the IG, I don't know whether it's, I'm sure there are some of them are listening to this program, we should at least invite invite some retired officers who are very knowledgeable, who are, who are well exposed. You see, outside the country, outside Nigeria, our policemen are one of the best. 
Eyes will charge the federal law provision for five years. I'm oh. the longest tail is of Nigerian police. We train our men. They perform very well. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, um, former CP uh, Lawrence um, Alobi. And of course, uh, we should say our uh, thanks uh, to Emmanuel Onwobiko, national coordinator of um, Huriwa, who joined us uh, on this particular discussion. And Jonathan Abanga, journalist, in as much as I would, would have really loved to get your own opinion concerning all of um, these issues of police brutality, uh, dehumanizing of um, civilians, and uh, all of that that happened in our polity. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Nigeria moves from China to Europe for loads. How could the incessant borrowing affect us in the nearest future? More in a moment. Join us again.